Hi friends, happy weekend. Cheers to the weekend. It is the start of my weekend, my three day weekend. And I am so excited for that. Partly because it's my weekend and partly because um, I did a video about a week ago. Yeah, a week ago. And they were calling for rain every single day, except for a handful of days, like the next three weeks. And yesterday afternoon it stopped raining and it's gorgeous today. And I think it's supposed to be gorgeous tomorrow before the rain comes back. So I'm in the garden and I'm super excited about that. So we are going to hang on the garden together and plant one of my last things. So I spent the last um, probably like two weeks heavily planting everything, getting everything in the ground at every single opportunity that I've had. Because uh, the weather has been gorgeous. It's been perfect. Um, typically this weekend is when I put tomatoes in next weekend or the weekend after is when I put in peppers. It's May 15th, I think, right around May 15th. So um, I've had my tomatoes in the ground for about three weeks now. So we are well ahead of where I typically am, which I think is awesome. Um, so this year I've actually been really struggling with the you need to get everything in the ground right now. It needs to be in the ground. And I keep trying to remind myself, like, you're still ahead of schedule. Like, we're well ahead of schedule. So, it's May 15th, and today is corn planting day. And I actually, I paid $8 for this pack of corn. Corn is expensive. And it doesn't feel like it's a lot of corn. Let me see how much it is. Okay. Let me see if you can see. It's a good amount of corn. It is red corn. I have never seen red people corn. Does that make sense? I don't know why it's red. So I have an incredible, this is incredible sweet corn. Uh, it says it's a leader in the industry. Incredible holds its ground against the best sweet corn varieties. This is a sweet corn that will win your county fair. It produces nine to nine and a half inch long ears with 16 to 18 rows of sweet kernels. So I'm going to grow that today. I typically grow peaches and cream corn, um, but this incredible, I decided to go with that this year. Um, so let's talk about corn for a second. So corn is one of the things, one of the biggest things I think maybe possible aside from onions that I don't grow fully on this homestead my goal is to produce all of my vegetables and I'm very close um the things I buy at the stores I do buy um weekly I buy fruit for the bunny I buy her bananas and apples and blueberries and carrots I don't count that as my what I consume because I'm buying it strictly for the bunny's treats um so I'm, I ignore that um, I do buy onions from the store this year. I'm I'm going to try very hard to not buy any potatoes and just use the potatoes that I grow. And I think um, if you haven't watched any of my previous videos, um, I experimented last year with growing a, oh, there's a spotted lantern fly baby. Sorry, how to kill a bug. Um, spotted lantern flies are super invasive. We have a ton of them. And last year we actually didn't have that many. And that was the first one that I saw for this year. So you have to, you have to kill them, which is actually really sad. I hate killing them because they're actually very pretty bugs. Um, that was a little baby one and they're, they're covered in dots. So they're pretty. And then when they get bigger, they're pretty. Um, but the problem with that is, the problem with them is they do attack you. <laughs> like when you're walking like under a row of trees, they were like swarm at your face. That is a little frightening. Um, but they're supposed to be incredibly poisonous and if your animal eats one or if like a bird eats one these animals are dying so at least that's what they're telling us so i do go out of my way to kill them if i see them so i'm hoping at least that's the truth and i'm not just killing these poor innocent <laughs> bugs um just because anywho rabbit hole i digress so last year i experimented and i grew potatoes in the spring and in the fall so i grew two rounds of potatoes which i think was really great because I grew spring potatoes. I harvested them in July. Um, and you can actually start harvesting them at any point. I have potatoes currently growing. Um, so I don't want to harvest them right now. But probably anytime in a month um, to two months. I could start harvesting maybe baby potatoes. And have baby fresh potatoes. And then in July, middle July. I can harvest my big potatoes. 
and then I would do another planting of potatoes in the fall or I guess I, I plant in the fall in July I harvest in the fall so then I have fresh potatoes through the winter so there's only a couple months that I have to go without fresh potatoes and rely on my canned potatoes so I am trying this year for the first time to not buy any potatoes at the store just wait until I can get in what I harvest um which means if I can do that that will be a big check another thing off the list of things I buy from the store so currently I grow I would say conservatively I think I'm being conservative I would say I probably grow 90 percent of my produce on the farm um for me I I grow all my broccoli I grow all my green beans um I do grow my salad in the spring I do buy salad from the store all year long if I want a salad I will buy a salad um let's see I grow all my zucchini I'm trying to think of I guess maybe the easiest thing is like what do I buy in the produce section at the store and I will say I will buy fresh carrots if I want fresh carrots because I don't have great luck growing carrots I've tried numerous times and I just don't have great success I tried again this year and none of them germinated and I just don't care so I do buy I do buy carrots um I think it's and then onions I do buy onions uh, but everything else, my asparagus I grow on the farm or on the homestead, green beans, potatoes, beets. Now, I will say, so that's, I can grow all the vegetables that I consume. I will say I do supplement from the local Amish farm. Um, so I live near Amish country and in Amish country, there's actually like this Amish store and it's like a grocery store, but they have all their Amish produce and stuff. So, um... I will supplement from there. Like, let's say like I have my jalapenos planted um, and with my jalapenos, I do so much with my jalapenos. I do cowboy candy. I do jalapeno relish. I do stuffed jal or jalapeno poppers. I do a whole bunch of my jalapenos. So if, for example, I had a year where I didn't get enough jalapenos to make all my jalapenos, I would go to the Amish market and buy the jalapenos at the Amish market. So I do supplement what I have. So I guess maybe I'm not a hundred percent like off the homestead. Um, but I, I technically, I technically don't need to do that. So I don't know what I'm trying to say, but <laughs> I guess my whole point is I do grow a large, large, large majority of my food from my homestead. The one thing I haven't been able, all of that to say, the one thing I haven't been able to source for myself is corn. Um, I planted corn before the first year I planted corn I did get edible corn um but it was so few and far between I didn't do a big planting of it I did a decent plant I'm not a big plant and then I forgot to fertilize and fertilizing is big with corn um I got a few years here or there so I had fresh eaten but then that's it um whereas with the second year I did corn uh they grew heads but the corn was like really mushy so I don't really know what happened there so we're going to try again with the hope I'm going to heavily, heavily, heavily plant and I'm going to fertilize with the hope that I'm going to be able to at least supplement the corn I put back every year. So currently I buy the corn from a local Mennonite woman. My mom is friends with her. We call her. We're like, hey, we need this. And she gives it to us and it works out great. It's great corn. I freeze it. It's fantastic. Um, and I honestly <laughs> have a ton left in my freezer. Last year we did enough for two years and... So I still have a ton left in my freezer, so that's great. But I want to grow my own and I want to put back my own corn. So that is the goal for today. So let me have a sip and let me show you where we're going to be planting this corn. I'm excited. So I have this area of my garden that I call the pasture. Um, I'm a person, I, didn't, I guess I didn't really realize this until more recently but I'm a person who I like to name things and then I give them a name and when I refer to them I always refer to them by that name like I have the windmill garden I have the pasture I have the potato patch even though it's not the potato patch um it's a thing that I do don't ask me why <laughs> but this has become the pasture so along the edge of the pasture I'm attempting to grow zinnias this year um I had a whole bunch planted I was out of town the rabbits Oh, my fingers in the way I had a whole bunch planted while I was out of town the rabbits ate all of them so I have two left that I have one left that is steadily getting eaten 
Um, the other one is over there. You can't really see it. It did get eaten a little bit more. But what's left? There's little, like little stems left. So I don't know if they'll be able to come back. If they'll be able to come back or not. But I did reseed this whole area with zinnias. So my, my hope is I'm trying to fight off the rabbits that these zinnias can grow. Um, I think what I need to do is get my get my net in and put my net in um, over the zinnias while they get started to at least give them a start so the bunnies don't just mow them down. But, so ignoring right along the fence, this area is going to be the corn patch. And I'm excited. So, a couple of things with corn. Every year, my corn does blow down. In my experience, if you grow corn, you have to be okay with it blowing down. Um, so planting it where I do, I have the fence on that side, which works out well to protect the winds from this side. Um, I'm hoping by having a tall row of zinnias behind it, it'll protect a little bit of the wind from this side. Um, but I'm going to plant them in this area. And I'm going to plant them close together in the hopes that the corn will like help support each other so it doesn't just get mowed down when it is windy um so this area to give you a little bit of a um history i guess on this area i had all of my mulch i had mulch delivered last july we put it all on this bed and we overwintered it in this bed i have since moved a lot of it out um i do have a little bit of mulch we're gonna move around before we get started but i have most of the mulch out of here and you there is still wood chips you can see I don't want to get rid of all of the mulch I'm gonna make the lines for my corn um, but it used to be like 10 inches thick it's not even an inch thick and there are some areas where it is but we're gonna move that before we get started so I think this is gonna be a really good bed I'm really hopeful from the mulch that I've moved the soil underneath is really really nice um, so I'm gonna get planted today I'm also going not today but this weekend, um, hopefully when it's not raining, I'm going to go to the store at Lowe's and I'm going to get some cow manure for this space. I'm going to cover this space with cow manure. And I, I forget if I have, you need a, um, corn is a big nitrogen feeder. So I want to get blood meal if I don't already have some. I used all of my fer fertilizers last year and I'm slowly buying them back because they are a little bit expensive. So if I don't have blood meal, I'll need to get some and I'm going to fertilize this in with blood meal and cow manure and then i'm gonna do i'm trying to get in the habit this year of fertilizing every two weeks so every two weeks hopefully fertilize the space with either like a fish emulsion or with just some blood meal a nitrogen fertilizer um so yeah i think that's the update on that space so that's what i'm gonna do um so we're just gonna go ahead and get started i'm gonna get a little bit of that the last remaining bits of that mulch moved to the side and then I'm just going to dig out kind of where I'm going to put my trenches. And I'm going to plant this corn very close together. I'm also not going to give any recommendations on spacing. Because I have obviously bunnies in this garden. I have squirrels in this garden especially. And squirrels love corn. So a lot of what I plant does get either the corn kernel gets dug up and eaten. eaten or when it um, comes in it gets eaten. So I plant heavily in the hopes that some of it gets left behind for me to eat. Okay, so let me put you down and we're gonna get started.
argue you by Okay, come here. Come here. Come here. Okay. So this took me no time at all to just clear back the mulch that's on top. I'm not worrying about tilling what's underneath. I don't till, period. I just build up soil. So I'm not gonna plant these super deep. Um probably about half an inch because I do know I am going to come put just a thin layer of cow manure and compost on top of this whole bed. So I'm not going to plant them as like I typically think I would plant these probably about three quarters of an inch to an inch deep. So I'm not going to do that this time because I know I'm going to cover them. But I did lay down some two by fours to help me go. Actually do that, not do that. I lay down two by fours to help me make sure I have my corn in the line because um, I'd like to have a line and then one thing I always forget is to leave pathways in your garden. So I left the decent sized pathway over here in order to access um, that side of my garden, my peppers and stuff. Uh, and then I left a much, much smaller pathway on this side of the corn to hopefully access my zinnias. But I think once the zinnias get big, that's not gonna be a thing anymore, but I can at least harvest the zinnias from the outside of the garden. But don't forget your pathways. Make sure you put your pathways. So I, I have a pathway over here and I'm leaving some space in front of me to be able to get to the, the sweet potatoes which are behind you, the pumpkins which I planted on this side of you, and then have some space with the corn. So don't forget your pathways. They are important. Now I'm wearing clean pants and this is why I always garden in my nice clothes. That's what I do. But and then I want to put my knees on the ground and then these pants, which are brand new, are going to get dirty. So let me see if I can find something that we can at least try to not get ourselves dirty before I start planting. Okay. An old piece of cardboard is going to have to do. So I laid out some... Um, I don't even know what size these are, just pieces of wood I have that's actually holding down my insect net in for the strawberries. And I'm just putting these down so I can keep my line straight. And then what I'm going to do, I think it's what, probably two inches wide. I think I'm just going to roll them over once, maybe twice, but that'll help keep my rows straight. I'm using just, I got this with my square foot garden. Um, tool which I really like but I really like to just use this to poke my holes you can use a pencil or a sharpie or your finger but I'm just gonna start poking holes
I think it's been, it's 6.10. I think I started around, I don't know, quarter or five at the latest. So that took me a while. Now here's two reasons why it took me a while. Number one, I really wanted to get my rows as straight as possible. Um, so I was going row by row and I could have done it in like multiple rows and that would have probably taken um, half the time, but I really wanted it to be straight rows. But by the last three rows, <laughs> I'm really hungry. It's past my dinner time and um, I got tired. <laughs> that is back breaking work. And the whole time I was doing it, I was trying to think of like, I, so I want to have obviously a big patch of corn one day when I have a farm. And I'm like, how, how do you plant this? <laughs> how do you plant this if you don't have a tractor? Um, so I do actually have two antique corn planter devices. Um, neither of them work. <laughs> so they like work, but the one doesn't drop corn and the other one, I forget what it does. I don't think, I don't, I don't know. Neither, I've tried both of them. Neither one of them have been successful for me at the very least. So between now and when I buy a farm, I need to figure out how to plant a large amount of corn and not the way that I just did it because crawling around in like an acre of land which I ideally want just for corn one day is not gonna happen so I'm gonna go make dinner I'm gonna throw some chicken and some veggies on the grill um my animals are ready to go in so it's dinner time for us I'm gonna fertilize that bed tomorrow um and like I said I'm going to get some cow manure and spread some cow manure on it so here's hoping that that corn grows um, for all the work and pain that I just did. And as you can see, I got my knees dirty. So new pants, <laughs> they're dirty. So they're going to go in the wash tonight. <laughs> like, why do I even try? I used the cardboard for a while and then I just gave up on the cardboard. So at least I tried, right? <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me um, and for helping me plant corn. Let's stay tuned and see what that corn does for the rest of the summer. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.